Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another Victober video. And today I'm going to be telling you about five Victorian novels which are all about romance across class divides. So today I'm going to be talking about um, a few wonderful novels which look at cross-class romance or look at love stories that take place kind of across social divides, class divides. This video is part of my five Victorian novels about series where I talk about five Victorian novels which all look at a particular theme. I'll link the playlist down below with more videos. I am actually slightly cheating today because um, there should be five Victorian novels to talk to you about, but I actually have six because um, I didn't know which one of these to take off the list, so I thought I would just give you all six. You could have a bonus book today. To be honest, there are so many other books I could have put on this list, um, but I thought these six looked at kind of um, romance across class divides in quite an interesting way. So let's start off with my favourite book on the list, and um, my favourite book of all time, Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens, a wonderful, wonderful book. Um, my earliest memory to do with our mutual friend um, is not reading the book, but um, my parents had the video tape um, of the mini series of our mutual friend, and the tagline of it was love in a city where class governs all. Um, and I've always remembered that because it, I find it really interesting that that was the tagline of the 90s miniseries um, because I do feel like it's a pretty good tagline for our mutual friend um, and obviously it fits in with this video theme. So I thought I'd mention that. There is a lot of um, love in a city in which class governs all happening in our mutual friend. There's a lot of love um, happening across class divides. And there are two kind of... Um, interesting dynamics going on um, in our mutual friend. Um, one between a young man who is a secretary and a young woman who was low middle class, um, is low middle class, but has been adopted by some very wealthy people. Um, although they are very wealthy, but don't have a lot of class. Um, so her class position is kind of complicated because she um, is possibly set to inherit a lot of money, which has kind of lifted her above um, the position she began in. Um, but she comes from a lower middle class background where she didn't used to have any money at all. Um, so her and the secretary are sort of of the same class in a way, but now she's been kind of elevated above that station. She really considers herself to be very far above him. And he's maybe falling a bit in love with her, but they have a very interesting dynamic going on in terms of complicated class setup. And then there is also a kind of connection formed between a barrister, a gentleman, um, and a working class young woman who um, is kind of right at the bottom of society. Um, she works as a water woman, um, rowing her father out on a boat. Um, and her father makes his living by pulling dead bodies from the Thames and trying to um, either get money for a reward or um, take all the money out of their pockets. So she is right at the bottom of society. He is very near the top and, and they have an interesting dynamic too. Our Mutual Friend is a book about class really in many ways and the way this book looks at class and the way that it looks at romantic relationships and love across class divide is just wonderful. Um, I love this book so much and I love the way that it looks at those themes. I should say that I've mentioned Our Mutual Friend but I could have picked like a lot of other Dickens books for this um, video but I thought I would just stick to one Dickens book and um, I know Great Expectations would have maybe been the obvious choice but Our Mutual Friend is um, more true to my heart and has more like proper love stories um, than great expectations in my opinion um, and I just love it and I wanted to just do one Dickens so you know there, I know there are many other Dickens I could have picked for this anyway a more obvious choice perhaps than our mutual friend is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte this is a gothic novel a buildings romance and a love story um, and the love story at the heart of Jane Eyre is the love story um, between a young governess Jane Eyre um, and her master um, Mr Rochester who is a gentleman um, who is about 20 years her senior um, and also well above her in station um, and lots of like class drama ensues. Um, I feel like the way this book looks at Jane's class position in relation to Mr Rochester um, is really really interesting and also kind of the difficulty Jane has like forming a friendship with Mr Rochester on terms of equality because they are equals in like mind and conversation like they get on really really well um, and they can talk like equals but she is so constantly aware of the difference in their class positions um, and the difference in their age um, and I feel like that dynamic is just really interestingly explored in Jane Eyre so another book I highly recommend if this is a theme that interests you. Then the next book I wanted to mention is The Half Sisters by Geraldine Dewsbury. This is a wonderful novel that looks at class a lot. It follows two half sisters, one of whom is working class, one of whom is middle class. Um, Bianca, the working class girl, ends up becoming an actress, which was a really complicated 
class position within the Victorian period because if you were an actress, like you might be really celebrated and invited to like high society things. You might meet people from the upper classes, but you were also considered to be basically unrespectable. Being an actress was basically considered like one degree away from sex work, I suppose, within the Victorian mindsets. But Bianca, our main character, who is an actress, ends up kind of having two different love interests, both of whom are from the upper classes. Um, and that dynamic is really, really interesting. And the way this book looks at class as a whole is just fascinating. So another one I really recommend. The next book I wanted to mention is The Unclassed by George Gissing. This is another really interesting book. It follows a lot of different characters who kind of exist on the periphery of the class system um, within the Victorian period in a really interesting way um, and it kind of focuses on the relationship between Ida Starr who is a sex worker um, and a man called Waymark who is a young educated man who has the kind of class background and the culture of um, the middle classes but not the wealth he doesn't really have money to support himself in the kind of life he would like to live and the kind of life that he maybe grew up thinking he would live um, and we basically look at the relationship between these two characters as well as lots of other characters around them um, and the difference is in in their class position um, and in kind of the social position of all those around them is really really interestingly explored in the unclass. It's a really really fascinating book. I will say that I feel like the ending is not quite as strong as the rest of the book but I still think it's a really interesting wonderful book that really breaks down class in an interesting way so another one I definitely recommend. So far for the first four books we have been looking at kind of um, men with a higher social and class position than the women they might be interested in but for the last two I have two books where um, the woman is of a higher social position which you see a little bit less in Victorian literature and is really interesting when you do come across it. Um, so the first book I wanted to mention is Two on a Tower by Thomas Hardy. Um, Thomas Hardy, a bit like Charles Dickens, is a writer who is very interested in relationships and romantic relationships across class divides. Um, so there are a lot of Thomas Hardy books I could have included in this video. But I thought I would mention Two on a Tower, one, because I feel like the class dynamics in it are really, really interesting, and also because it's a book I speak about less, because I don't love it as much as I love quite a lot of other Hardy books. Um, basically because I don't like the ending that much, but it is a Thomas Hardy book that a lot of people really, really love. Um, and I also do, I do really like it. Like I do still think it's a good book. Um, I just wish Thomas Hardy does something slightly different with the ending. Anyway, Two on a Tower is a book which follows the relationship between an upper class woman, Lady Constantine, um, who's in her like late twenties, early thirties. She's married, but her husband is away on a long expedition and doesn't show any signs of returning. And she is very lonely when she meets um, a young man from an impoverished background called Swithin St. Cleeve, who is definitely sort of quite a long way beneath her on the social scale. He's also um, sort of nearly 10 years her junior. Um, he wants to be an astronomer though, and he has kind of grand visions for his life. Um, and these two people kind of end up falling in love and it's about the relationship between them um, and all the social divides that divide them. Um, and it's a really, really interesting book and the way that it looks at the kind of class dynamics between these two, is just fascinating. So I do recommend A Two on a Tower, even if, like I say, I'm slightly annoyed with Hardy for the ending. And then I also wanted to mention Anthony Trollope's Lady Anna. Um, this is a wonderful book which is really really interesting um, and in this we look at a character called Lady Anna. Um, so Anna is the daughter of an earl. But is she the legitimate daughter of an earl? That is the question that Anna and her mother have been trying to get answered. Um, Anna's mother believed that she was married to this earl, um, but this earl later claimed that he wasn't actually married to her and the marriage wasn't real and um, it wasn't legal. So Anna grew up for some of her life believing she was an earl's daughter um, and then thought actually she was illegitimate, which would move her right down from very high up the social scale to very low down the social scale. And while thinking herself in a lower social position, Anna met and fell in love with a young man who is a tailor, so a working class young man. But there is still a lot of dispute going on about whether Anna is legally the legitimate daughter of the, her father or not. Um, and so the kind of question in the Lady Anna as a book is, is Lady Anna going to stay true to um, the young working class tailor um, who she has promised herself to, or is she going to instead marry her wealthy upper class cousin? Who knows? Um, and everything goes on in the book from there. And it's a really interesting book to look at, like cross class relationship, because it really examines kind of Anna's complicated class position. Um, 
and how much it depends on like whether she's legitimate and so it really looks at like that issue of illegitimacy in Victorian society as well so I really recommend Lady Anna it's a fantastic anti-trollop book and a really interesting read so there we have it those are six rather than five um, wonderful Victorian books about cross-class romance and about love across its social divides. Um, let me know if you've read any of these books, if you have any other books you'd like to recommend on similar themes. And that's all for now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.